Right. It is given that A and B are angles such that these things are true. I didn't like marking this one. This was a real low point. You get into a rhythm of it, and the first three went really well. And then I always thought, oh, it's question four with a lot of 20 of these. Anyway, so um, it's given that A and B are angles such that these things are true. Find the possible exact values of tan A minus B. It's just an odd question, isn't it? It's kind of a bit vague and fluffy as a question. Um, so we're going to start with these two statements that we're going to work on. Sec squared A minus tan A is 13. Um, if we're going to, let's think where we're heading. If we're going to deal with tan of A minus B, tan of A minus B is a formula in the formula booklet that is tan A minus tan B all over 1, minus, one plus tan A tan B. So it's, we've got to get what tan A is and what tan B is. That's where we're aiming for. So can I turn this into being something just to do with tan? Well, I probably can, can't I? Because sec squared A, we've got an identity that, that feeds into that. We have learnt that if we can say that sine squared x plus cos squared x is 1, we can divide all of that by cos squared x to get tan squared x plus 1 is sec squared x. That's a thing that we can do. So that means that sec squared a is 1 plus tan squared a. So back to that, it's now looking like that, isn't it? That looks suspiciously quadratic equation-y to me. Let's bring everything to one side. We've got tan squared a minus tan a minus 12 is 0. <coughs> Can I think of two things that multiply to give minus 12 and add to give minus 1? Golly, I can. That's going to be tan a minus 4 and tan a plus 3, giving me two potential values of tan a. Tan a could be 4, or tan a could be minus 3. Notice I don't really care what a is. All I'm interested in is the value of tan a and I've got it. I've got two values for it. That's it. Right. Oh, great. Let's look at the other one. Sine B, sec squared B, is 27 cos B cosec squared B. All right. I need to end up with that in terms of tan. There looks to be all sorts of stuff going on all over the place with that. Let's, um, let's see if we can write it just in terms of sine and cos for a little while and see how that pans out. <coughs> this is sine b times 1 over cos b, so let's do that, or cos squared b, isn't it? And this is 27 times cos b over sine squared b, because cosec is 1 over sine. So it's looking like that. Okay, that's all right. Um, oh, what about if we multiply everything by those denominators? That would make things simpler. It's often a thing that we do when there's unknowns on the bottom. So we multiply by sine squared cos squared, sine squared b cos squared b. To get sine cubed b is 27 cos cubed b. Can you see what we've done there? We've just multiplied both sides by cos squared, multiplied both sides by sine squared. Even better, if I now divide both sides by cos cubed b, that's tan, isn't it? Sine cubed b over cos cubed b gives me tan cubed b is 27. Oh, that's lovely. If tan cubed b is 27, tan b is 3. Remember not to get carried away with these things. Um, if something cubed is 27, the thing is not plus or minus 3. You only do plus or minus if it's an even power, don't you? So tan cubed is 3. Uh, you could, if you went a slightly different route here, um, it is here. It is possible to end up with uh, a very, very interesting equation. You, you end up with a, a, a polynomial of order 5. If you've done it right, it comes out as being tan to the 5, b plus tan cubed b, minus 27 tan squared b, minus 27 equals 0. 
that polynomial has one solution that is tan b equals 3. It takes a bit of getting to, that's <laughs> quite a long way around to get there, but um, a, a few people in this class managed, you managed, didn't you? Did you get, you didn't get the answer. Okay, yeah, I got to the you got the point. I did, when I was marking, I did have quite a few people who got that far and managed to, to extract themselves from that to get tan b equals 3 at the end of it. But it was quite an adventure for them. Okay, we've got that tan a is either 4 or minus 3, tan b is 3, we're doing tan of a minus b. So tan of a minus b, which is tan of a minus tan of b over 1 minus 1 plus tan a tan b. Okay, we've got a few values that we can plug into that now. Notice we haven't found what a and b are, we've found what tan a and tan b are. So this could be either, let's take the first one, which was 4, so it's either 4 minus 3 over 1 plus 4 times 3, which is, I think, 1 over 13. There's one of our values. Or it equals minus 3 minus 3 over 1 plus 4 times I on, minus 3 times 3. Like that. And that one gives me minus 6 over 1, particularly 9 is minus 8. So my other value is 3 quarters. There are the two values, weren't they? Yes. And there we are. I, again, frustratingly, there were, I think there was at least one person who did all of this and then ended up getting a little sign mix-up going on in here and didn't get three quarters because they, they messed up the minus sign. So be really, really careful about those details. But that's it. Quite, quite a neat question. Maths.